First Kings chapter 22, verse 40. And Ahaz slept with his fathers, and Ahazah, Ahazah, his son, reigned in his stead. And Jehoshaphat, the son of Asa, going back down south, Judah, began to reign over Judah in the fourth year of Ahab, king of Israel. So when Ahab was in his fourth year, Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was 30 and 5 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 20 and 5 years in Jerusalem. That's the capital of Judah down south. <clears throat> and his mother's name was Azuba, the daughter of Shelah. And he walked in all the ways of Asa, his father. He returned not aside from it, doing that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Now, that's remarkable. If you remember Asa, he was right in the Lord. He did well, except for the final days of his life, where he put a uh, prophet in jail. He sought the Lord, he sought the, the physicians more than the doctors. I mean, more than the Lord for his feet. But Jehoshaphat followed the good ways of his father. He turned not aside from it, doing that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. So God sees. A little P.S. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away. For the people offered and burnt incense yet in the high places. Now that little note that Jehoshaphat, he's right, he's doing well. Them high places, and they weren't all for God. Leaving to the fact this Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, should have done something to get rid of them places. It's a defilement of Judah. It's a defilement of Jerusalem. And Jehoshaphat made peace with the king of Israel. Look at that. Remember we talked about last night? King, where is Ahab's name? He has no name. He's died and gone off into hell. A new name written down in glory, your name written in the Lamb's book of life. If your name is not in that book, you lose your name for all eternity. You, people can lift up names today, and I can think of a hundred names right now that the world lifts up as to them great and wonderful people. And yet, for Daniel, the Bible says, Thou art beloved. To Gideon, you're known in heaven. To uh, Rahel and to Mary, God knows you. To have your name known of God is very important. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat and his might that he showed, how he warred, there was war, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the king of Judah? Well, Lord willing, when we get done with 2 Kings, we'll come to Chronicles. And the raiment of the Sodomites. So raiment of Sodomites mean that there were a lot more Sodomites than there are now. There are Sodomites that remained, which remained in the days of his father Asa. So, whatever Asa did, whatever's going on, there was an exodus of the Sodomites under Asa, but there were still some that stayed. And those that stayed, he, Jehoshaphat, took them out of the land. Get out of here. Get your perversion. Get your sexuality. God does not love you. Get out. You are defiling the land. America, a Christian nation, yet given all rights, giving all laws, giving all protection to Sodomites, and allowing them to go and say, God loves us. No, he doesn't. Now, you can argue with the Constitution, you can argue the freedom of religion and all that, but according to what God has said in the Bible, he says, hey, I am happy with Jehoshaphat. What was one of the things he did? He got rid of the Sodomites, the remnant of them. I like that, God said. And then you're going to turn around and say, God bless America, and we are doing completely opposite of a king that God says, I like. And I'm not talking about the worldly people. I'm not talking about the lost people. I'm not talking about the religious people. I'm talking about Christians in Baptist churches. Constitution, we got the right of, you know, for freedom. 
while you mail off your tax, while you mail off your, your, your property tax, while you have to get permission to cut a tree down in your yard, while you got to get a license, to, and then you speak about freedom. And then you cry, baby, because they want to take your guns away. They want to, well, that's not freedom. You're so confused. Sodomites belong out of the land. Now you witness to them. I witnessed the people come up to me. What about sodomites? Well, let's look at basic sins, lying or stealing. Have you ever done that? Why do we got to look at the big sins? But these are people who are open. They're out. They, they're proclaiming like they're doing today. And what did Judah do? Get out of here. And God said, and he walked in all the ways of Asa's father and turned not aside from, from it, doing that which is the right in the eyes of the Lord, nevertheless the high places. Maybe that's where the Sodomites were. I don't know. He took them out of the land, the land of Israel, God's land. There was then, now this is a weird note. There was then no king in Edom. A deputy, that's the first time that word shows up, was king. I don't know why that's in there. <laughs> There's something to it. Edom did not have a king. There was a deputy. If you can get nuggets out of that, glory to God. So, I mean, we're talking about Judah. We're talking about this wonderful king. And just before we get into the trouble of Jehoshaphat, and, and he's going to get in trouble because we all have sinned, we get this little Edom note. Now, Edom... Esau is Edom, and Esau is uh, Edom is Esau, and Esau is Edom. That is the brother of Jacob. This is a family with Israel. This is not the chosen family because Edom, Esau, sold his birthright to Jacob, and it went to the twelve tribes of of Jacob. Edom had dukes, not tribes. And in the middle of all this, Esau hates Israel. They're going to be cursed of their hatred of Israel. And God puts this note in here, 47, about no king. Jehoshaphat made ships of Tarshish. Does that sound familiar? That's where Jonah went. To go to Ophir for gold. Now, this place, Ophir, is just known for its gold. Like Californians know for, for the gold rush and all that. But they went not. But they went not. For the ships were broken at Ezon Geber. And later on, we'll, we'll discuss that. You know, it's an alliance that Jehoshaphat made. And he shouldn't have been making these alliances. That's one of his sins. He got together, he got in unity, and, you know, let's get everybody together. And God broke up those ships for that reason. You don't belong over there, Jehoshaphat. Then said Azahiah, okay, after this has happened. Verse 49 is a whole content of the different time. The son of Ahab unto Jehoshaphat. So here's north and south. Israel and Judah. Israel comes down. Let my servants go with thy servants in the ships. All right, let's us start a navy. Let's us have a shipping. And because the sins of verse 48 of the ships there, Jehoshaphat, but Jehoshaphat would not. Jehoshaphat learned his lesson. And we'll come across this again in Chronicles. Lord willing. Jehoshaphat sinned. God rebuked him for the sin with destruction. And he says, you know what? No. I'm not going to do that again. Hey, Jehoshaphat, let's build a navy. Let's... Mm, no. You guys are wicked. We're trying to do right. What fellowship do I have with Christ and Belial? What do I have with the unbeliever, with the believer? I know those are not written in Jehoshaphat, but it's the same idea. And Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers in the tomb, Abraham's bosom. Because <coughs> remember when, when Jesus talks about Lazarus in Abraham's bosom, he says he sleepeth. And Abraham does all the talking. And was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father. Now look, Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers. Okay. And was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father. Notice how he, Jehoshaphat went somewhere 
before his body was buried. His soul left and went to Abraham's bosom for Jehoshaphat. And then they buried the body. So there, unlike with the Jehovah Witnesses, your soul departs your body, even in the Old Testament, and you go somewhere. Now, Jehoshaphat went going to Abraham's bosom. He was right in the eyes of the Lord. He did proper. Ahab, far as we can tell, Old Testament is very hard to tell. He died and his soul went into hell. You don't stay in that grave when they buried about. Now, one of the biggest fears I had before I got saved was I thought that, you know, even though your body was dead in a coffin, buried or ashes or anything, I feared that you still had a consciousness. That was my fear before salvation. The Bible disproves that. The Bible doesn't say you come back as a cockroach or as a cow or anything like that. The Bible says that your body is buried and your soul goes off. When, when Jesus dies on that cross, the following verses after the death of Jesus, the Bible makes sure to say, and he craved the body of Jesus. They took the body and laid it in the tomb. They wrapped the body with, not Jesus, that's the body, that's the dead body. Where did Jesus happen there? He's already gone down into hell and deposited our sins, walking across the gulf and going over to Abraham's bosom and say, hi guys, I'm here especially to meet all of you, but the dying thief. The Bible says, Paul says to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. That quick. So the soul of Jehoshaphat slept with his father's Abraham's bosom. And with his body, they buried with his father's the city of David, his, the sepulcher. And Jehoram, his son, reigned in his stead. Now, Azahiah, I say that name different times, and forgive me, the son of Ahab, now this is noteworthy, began to reign over Israel in Samaria, that's up north, the 17th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. So when Jehoshaphat has been in the kingdom of Judah, 17 years, here comes Azahiah, and reigned two years over Israel. He did evil, unlike Jehoshaphat, in the sight of the Lord. So God saw the good that Jehoshaphat done. God sees the evil that Azahiah has done. And then when you get the Proverbs, which I don't know if they would have a copy of them yet, but what Solomon wrote, he's been dead many years. Solomon writes in, in Proverbs 15, verse 3 or 4, Behold, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. It's not Santa Claus that's making a list. And checking it twice. I don't even think God needs to check it twice. It is not that God that Santa knows the good boys and the good girls. We read here that God sees, hey, Jehoshaphat was a good king. Azahiah, he's a bad king. And God has no trouble or problem knowing about those that are in his will to do right, because the Bible says the accuser of the brethren, Satan. Job 1 and 2 pops up and says, hey, God, did you see? You know, that accuser is the only place in the Bible that shows up and it's under Satan, Revelation 12. That's interesting. So he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father, Ahab. Now let's go to Exodus 20. We'll see something interesting here. As a side note, Exodus 20. And they'll explain. See, the law says the father shall not be put to death for the child. The child shall not be put to death for the father. You shall be put to death for your own sin. And that's, that's correct. But chapter 20, verse 5. And this is a perfect illustration of Ahab. Thou shalt not bow thy, down thyself to serve them. This is idols, images, and all that. Nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now, what's that? What is that? Ahab has taught Azahiah how to serve and worship images. That's what it comes down to. And listen, when I came out of the Catholic Church, 
Before I was saved, I was in the Catholic Church. Now, my father didn't bring me. My mom didn't bring me. My grandpa brought me. And he would tell me, say, you know, this is what we do here. When something new came up, he says, Stolly, this is, this is what we do. Grandpa, where, where they go in that little box over there? And he would explain it to me, what they do over there. You know, there's a candle. He would explain, you know. You put 25 cents in the little box there. You light a candle and you say this prayer. And the reason why that stinky stuff is going while they're walking down and all that. And then when he does the hocus pocus. Listen, that was all explained to me by my grandfather. I learned that stuff. All the stuff that we're learning by Azahiah now. We're, I, know, I know we're going to talk about his mother. But that was learned by his father. Azahiah is going to teach his children. That form of, re, re, of idolatry and imagery is usually taught by the parents, which is taught by the grandparents, which is taught by the great-great-grandparents. And it's what you call, you know, the family religion. So he walked in the way of his father. What's that? That's the golden calves. That is, remember the golden calves? Remember that worship of Jeroboam? He had his own priest. He had his own sacrifice. He had his own altar. He had his own festival holidays. An imitation Catholic church, B.C., before Christ. That's Ahab. Now we're not done. And in the way of his mother, Jezebel. Well, what was her problem that she taught her son? She taught him Baal. And with Baal would have been Astrid. And that would be the Easter bunnies. That would be the Christmas. That would be, here's this image that you bow down to, son. And then you bring in your father's religion and you'll have your, listen, 400 prophets. Azahiah knew the prophets of Jezebel. Azahiah knew the prophets of Baal. He knew the prophets of that Elijah had killed on Mount Carmel. He knew about the prophets that lied to his father and what we read the other night. But he didn't know about God. He didn't know about Jehovah. I doubt he knew about the ways of Jerusalem in the temple. He had been brought up by his father and mother. When you go back to Exodus 20, that's the, that's the curse. That's the thing. Now that curse, as far as me, stopped because in April of 1987, I received Christ as my Savior. I did not ever bring my children into that religion of Catholic. I have never brought them up in the idolatry. I've never brought them up in the imagery. I don't hate God. I brought them up in the nourishment of Jesus Christ. That stopped right there. As far as that line. As far as me, as, as, as a child, as, as the father of my children. I am not going to get that condemnation. But it still goes on today. There are children that are in a religion. And they're there because of their parents. And they're going to learn it of their parents. And in the way of Jeroboam. That's the golden calves. The son of Nebat. Who made Israel to sin. So look at all this wickedness and sin. It's the golden calves. It's the Baal. It's all in unity. And God says it's sin. Baal was an image. Baal was a fallen god. Jeroboam had golden calves. He had the holiday. He had the priests that were not Levites. And God said, made Israel to sin. Run that right back over to, to we're not going to go there, but Exodus chapter 20 again. It's a sin. It's evil in the sight of the Lord. It's not aids of worship. It's not approved. It's maybe approved by the big fat dope folk, but it's not approved by God. Over and over and over. If there's one thing that God kicks, he kicks idols and imagery. Over and over and over. And religious, well, what will it do? We'll give you another book of Jesus Christ. We'll give you a missile. We'll give you the Koran so little children can color. We'll give you golden plates. We'll give you tea leaves. We'll give you a crystal ball. We'll give you anything but the word of God. Because if you ever open up the word of God. And if you were to study the word of God. Verse 52. And go through all that we've gone through. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. 
Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, going into 2 Kings, Lord willing. We have come to the very known fact that God hates idolatry. And here it is at the close of 1 Kings. The close of 1 Kings, 22 chapters. Does God close it with prosperity and happiness and butterflies and, and, and sheep lying with bears and every? No, he ends it with idolatry. Watch. For he served Baal, the last verse, and worshiped him and provoked to anger the Lord God of Israel. How's that? Now, people will say, God hates the sinner. I mean, God hates the sin and loves the sinner. Uh-uh. God does not want anything to do with Azariah. Not with his religion. God got angry. He that has not the Son has, shall not see light, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. That don't sound like love. The Lord God of Israel. See, he's still the God of Israel. Though they're in Baal, though they're in Golden Cat, he is still the God of the Jewish people north and south. And we have found out that there are people in Israel that are still serving the Lord and still doing right. Maybe going down to Jerusalem, I'm not sure. But as far as the king, as far as Azariah, you're wicked, you're violent, I'm angry with you. I don't have anything to do with you. And there's been enough prophets that have come. Elijah's still walking around. Elisha is walking around. We haven't been told and been recorded what's going on. And provoked it. Now listen, I can imagine when, when Jezebel got angry, her, her prophets were killed. And when uh, Ahab would come home and say, I had this prophet come in my face today. I guarantee Azahiah would have heard all that. And provoked to anger the Lord God of Israel. What? Idolatry. Idolatry. According to all that his father had done. Ahab. So you see Exodus 20? That has been all charged on Ahab. Ahab's going to get a worse place in hell. Why? What did Jesus say about, a, about children? Woe unto them. I can't quote the verse, but he said, be better if, the, if you hang a millstone about your neck and be cast off into, a, into the ocean or sea than to offend one of these. Ahab and Jezebel has offended one of these, their little boy, Azariah. We got to realize as parents, what we do to our children, God is going to judge one day. We give it the best effort, we do the best we can, hey, that's, that's good. But if we teach them rottenness, we teach them sin, we teach them the way of wickedness, all that his father had done. That, that's a shame. To, that's the close of this chapter. First Kings. We end with Baal worship. That's not good. 